first ride. I'm a little nervous, but excited. Let's do this. Got a little something on your face. Needed a quick shave. Quick shave? Respect the process. So, tell us everything. How are you liking it out here in the burbs? I think most people would agree that ads are typically annoying. This is coming from me, a guy who works in marketing. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at why ads today just don't work. Like they literally don't work like they used to. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at three ads from this fantastic book on classic mail order ads that used to be found in old school comic books to see why they work and the ads of today just don't have the same level of reach or effectiveness. The first ad we're gonna look at is for the Venus flytrap. One is one that I've seen the least in my comic books, but I do remember it clearly enough. But at the time that I first saw it, I was too young to understand what I'm gonna show you now. This is less about the creative side and more about tracking. A lot of people get lazy these days, they track electronically and they just leave it all up to that device. So we're going to look at how they're doing it wrong versus how these old schoolers have done it correctly. When kids sent away for the Venus flytrap, they were expecting to receive a pre-grown plant that's ready to go. Feed me, grub on, feed me now! I'm starving! Of course, kids can't understand that this is logistically impossible. What they got instead was a packet of seeds and a custom pot to incubate those seeds in. This does a lot to explain why this product didn't have much in the way of staying power and efforts by the company to solicit sales of future products likely fell flat with most kids who poured their paper root money into the failed Venus flytrap. Look very closely at this ad though. Its success can be attributed to one word. Actually, it's not even a word. See if you can spot it. What you're looking for isn't even in the ad copy, which is very dialed in. But what helped that copy succeed in the way it did was the sequence of characters I'm referring to, which can be found in the advertiser's address. If you look closely, that would be it. Department VGK8. This was an old keying technique for print advertisers, and it wasn't exclusive to comic books. I'm not sure which comic book title this specific ad appeared in, but the title's initials were clearly VGK, and the specific specific issue the ad appeared in was number eight. So therefore, the advertisers were able to track any changes they made to this ad versus a similar ad that appeared in another comic book to see which one worked better. Today, we are taking tracking for granted. It's just baked into what we do. But back in the day, this is how you measured how effective your advertising happened to be and whether or not to continue advertising in a specific title. Offline advertising is still a very powerful medium, even in the digital age, but only only so much as you track how much traffic these ads are sending to your business. No doubt in my mind that if this company was still around today and had an actual quality product that people like, they would do a great job. They'd obviously tap right into digital marketing, no questions there, but they would also blend in the offline marketing that did so well for them back in the day and that would boost their overall visibility as well as contribute to word of mouth growth as well. Now the second ad we're going to look at comes to us courtesy of Count Dante. This man was a self-professed martial arts master, though he did actually live the legend. He was the real deal. The story is incredible. This is a masterclass in storytelling and world building, which is something that's gravely missing from advertising these days. And wait until you hear how this story ends. Were you one of those own little world type of kids? If the answer is yes, then you likely understand the difference between branding and world world building. You understand that introducing someone to an entire plane of reality instead of merely presenting them with a differentiated product or service makes the entire experience. Count Dante understood this concept very well. His martial arts teachings were not the product. The vast, secretive world of intrigue, danger, and adventure was the actual product. For the first 28 years of his life, Count Dante was known as John Kean, son of a prominent doctor in Chicago. But he understood that if he was going to pony up the money to run ads in comic books, he was going to have to meet kids on their level. So he became every bit the sensational character featured in the comic books he advertised in. His fabricated backstory told of how his family family was purged by an evil authoritarian regime in Spain, when in fact Count Dante was Irish. He built a parallel world in which he claimed to have engaged in literal mortal combat in countries like Thailand where he had to kill his opponents in front of roaring crowds. 
How can a random local dojo owner possibly compete with that? When you join a local dojo, you get a membership card to confirm you're all paid up. When you join Count Dante, you get a secret card to his elite Black Dragon Fighting Society. Now, while the Count Dante persona was just that, it doesn't mean John didn't live up to part of the legend. In 1974, he was charged with masterminding the robbery of a Pure Later Depot for $4.3 million, which in today's money, would be worth $27.5 million. Unfortunately, John died shortly before the trial concluded, which brings this whole story to a very sad and tragic end. And the third ad we're gonna look at is one of my personal favorites. It's one that completely fascinated me, despite the fact that even as a child, I never went through with it. I never ordered this product. I'm sure some of you will know what I'm talking about when I mention Sea Monkeys, which is one of the most fascinating comic book ads you can see. Let's get into that one. Kids thought that by ordering Sea Monkeys, they would have the coolest pets to show off to their friends who only had mere goldfish, cats, and dogs as companions. The illustration in most Sea Monkeys ads gave the kids the impression that these creatures would form their own distinct little society within their aquarium. When the package finally did arrive in their mailbox, what the recipient got was the Venus flytrap surprise. Instead of seeds, they were sent eggs with a pouch of chemicals that would supposedly bring the Sea Monkeys other state of suspended animation once they were in water. Let's step aside from the quality of the product now to look at why the ad was so successful. The majority of ads either flop or merely perform at an okay level. It's just the way the game works. But one of the reasons this ad ran for as long as it did was the perfect hit on the right target factor. The classic comic book ad you see here is truly an outlier. Not all of those classic comic book ads are well known. Go see for yourself. Look up old ads and you'll find plenty of forgotten examples. So why is it that we all remember the Sea Monkeys ads? We remember them on account of leverage. The ad runners for these products understood their market and what brought them to the advertising medium, which was comic books, that their ads appeared in. Kids read comic books for, one, intrigue, two, a love of stories, three, an appreciation for art, and four, to have their curiosity peak. So then, when advertising in a medium like comic books, why would you want to deviate from that medium? Wherever it is your ideal customer finds your ads, always remember, they didn't get there specifically to consume your message. So the takeaway from the Sea Monkeys advertising campaign is to always conform to your advertising medium. Sometimes going with the flow rather than trying to stand out is actually the smart play. Well, I hope this video has helped to clear up why today's ads are not only annoying more than anything else, but also why they have such limited runs and typically have no staying power. If you want more videos like these, as well as content related to homesteading and how-tos, please like and subscribe this video for more. I'll see you in the next one.